Alrighty, now we're going to make the center section, which uh, for this little nature themed goblet is going to be a, a mushroom uh, center section with a little gecko on the outside. And one of my favorite colors for doing mushrooms is butterscotch. Uh, I also like caramel. I can go either way. Uh, there's some other good colors, Aurora and a few of the exotics. Uh, I've, in fact, I've got a whole other video on just making these mushroom pieces. Uh, if you want to refer to those, I'm sure there'll be some links below. And uh, so here we go. I'm starting off with some of the butterscotch, just welding it up to a 4 mil handle and keeping the size of uh, about 4 mil for just a couple of inches there so that I can push in a long stemmed mushroom with uh, you know, a, a straight stick of colored glass. You don't want to have it be too large or too small. Uh, in this case, uh, about four mil is just what I want. And the glass that I'm going to put it into to create the penetrating mushroom effect will be about 12 mil or one half inch uh, solid glass rod. So now I've got just a, a few inches of the four mil butterscotch on the end of my uh, handle and that is enough to make oh at least two mushrooms maybe three and this started off life as a half inch rod and that's the last little bit of it that was hooked up to some seven millimeter for a handle and that gives me a little bit of rotational advantage a little bit of gearing there so I'm spinning it in the flame, I'm getting it really hot. You just need a big glob of glass. You can do this on the end of a much longer, heavier rod, but that's what I was down to, so that's what I'm working with. And it, it works exactly the same. Heat it up, drive the heat all the way to the core. You want the inside of this material to be molten, very glassy and, 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 and extremely white hot. And then you're going to cool the outside, which is going to make a kind of a cool cylinder of fairly hot glass with molten glass inside of it. And by chilling the outside of the glass clear cylinder, it'll hold its shape. I don't want this thing to deform too much when I push the butterscotch into it it's going to deform like a bullet on impact and it's going to mushroom out. But I don't want this mushroom to appear to be floating in midair, so I'm going to push it in, let it expand, and I'm not going to pull back out. If anything, I'm just going to slightly keep pushing. And you'll see a back marvering motion that's going to flatten out the base of the mushroom stalk. Here we go. Plenty of heat there. And heat the tip of the mushroom that's going to go in. Heat the entry point and then drop it down, stabilize it, and begin the push. Since it's in the marvering paddle, it's not going to balloon out. It's going to stay cylindrical, and the mushroom goes in, it mushrooms out. We've got the base section, and it's still got good thickness, even at the bottom. So we're going to snap that off. We're not going to do any more pushing or pulling. We're just going to snap it off. Just rotate it. It'll hit that point where it's very brittle, and we'll snap it. Here we go. Three, two, one, pop. There we go. <clears throat> so now we've got a mushroom, but it's, it's simply floating there. I'm going to add some material underneath that's going to represent the ground. And please keep in mind this whole time, this is kind of like a, a funhouse mirror. This mushroom is much shorter and fatter than it will eventually be because this goblet section here is, uh, you know, I don't know, it's only about an inch tall. But by the time we're done, we're going to stretch it out to probably two and a half, three inches, maybe even a little bit more. Uh, so that mushroom is going to stretch up and become much more slender. But right now we've just pushed it down short and reheating it to get rid of any bubbles down near the base of the mushroom stem. Uh, truing it up and making a nice round cylinder. I, I do just love symmetrical stuff. All right, the mushroom's in. We've got the, the base flattened out. So in 
the spirit of psychotropic things, uh, let's wrap some cobalt over white underneath of it to represent the ground. Not very often do you actually see uh, cobalt ground, but hey, this is a mushroom goblet with whimsical things on it. Let's go for it. So <clears throat> we've spiraled the cobalt over white, and now this is a this is a slime green color. It's transparent when you heat it, semi-opaque when it's not, and it has some organic variation to it, so I do like it. Uh, what we're trying to represent underneath of the mushroom is the earth, or the, the soil, the ground, la tierra, uh, any number of other names for it, but we will want it to look like uh, the thing that we walk on. So I'm going with kind of a green, and then I'm going to add some dots and spots to it, Okay, big old gob hooked up to it. And keep in mind, there's a lot of thermal energy involved in this. If at this point we just cut off that big old hot glob of glass we put on there, most likely we would cause it to fracture because of the dissimilarity of the, the, the temperatures. But after we weld this together, we're going to share the heat with the other portion and stretch it out and make it taller and more slender and that's going to dissipate the stress. This will actually become very strong and in most cases I can simply set this piece down and let it cool and vermiculite and it will not crack or fracture and I can return it to the kiln before applying it to a piece and it will reheat without any fractures. Just nice material. All of these colors are very compatible. Okay, we'll cut that off. I'm done with the base color, which is going to represent the earth underfoot. And let's see, let's, we got, um, oh, white. So let's put on some white spots, and then on each white spot, once we've got all of those on there, we'll put a little black dot on the top. It'll give it some real kind of 3D dimensionality and and, and very aesthetically pleasing uh, dots on the bottom of this thing. And there's the black color. A little light stringer of that and a real quick dot. Just a very small dot on the end of each one. Then we're going to put a nice large heat to it, uh, really smooth that in. At the same time, we're, we're really trying to anneal, we're trying to flame anneal the mushroom and the ground below it. So this is, this is an important step. We're not just applying heat because we want to melt in that bottom. We're applying heat because we want the whole thing to join together harmoniously. And then marvering it down really smooths it out, makes it very symmetrical, and distributes any stress. So I want to move uh, the direction of the handle that I'm holding it. I've got a little 4 mil in my left hand. That's going to become the new punty for this particular midsection. But first, I'm going to stretch out the entire mushroom. It's, as I said before, only about an inch and a half tall. And we want to move it up to about two and a half inches tall, make this a slender uh, midsection for our goblet. So just applying a lot of heat and slowly drawing it down, stretching it out, which is also really redistributing the stress in the material and making it much more likely to survive. Mushroom pendants and implosion things, they are notoriously difficult for uh, storing the thermal stress and then cracking later. So this polling is really alleviating a lot of that and we wind up with a very smooth piece. And the mushroom is much more elegant, stretched out, and tall.
tall than it was as a short fat squat piece. So the Marv ring paddle uh, really helps trip all the axes of this rotation and then cut off the top little punny and we have a center section that's pretty much ready to go. Um, I like to decorate them a little bit so let's put a gecko on this mushroom just kind of climbing around it it would be just fine at this point to weld the top to it and put a bottom on it but uh, yeah I really think I want to put a gecko on there it's just kind of a habit been doing this for a long time and geckos are really cute little critters and they really help fill up uh, a center section so here we go there's a little gecko body that I've already prepared and I'm gonna wrap the tail on just circular fashion uh, around and around and then it was with any vertebrate it has an S curve to the spine some of them will do more than one S curve as in this one and it's it's just think about drawing an S over and over and making that your spine that really helps with vertebrates with your insects and things you must keep them straight and segmented but with vertebrates yeah there's always got to be a nice smooth uh, sine curve there so I laid down the body and the tail and I want spots down the back so I'm gonna drop a whole bunch of white spots and then on top of every single white spot I'm gonna put a really small black dot and that's gonna come up with a two color dot a multi-tone kind of a thing uh, very pleasing to the eye and it matches up with the rest of the piece thematically Yep, that's it for the black dots. Now remember, so far this is a, a gecko, but it has no legs. We are going to put little nostril dots using the tweezers, and then kind of push up its under chin so that it's nice and flat. And then melt in all of those dots and spots. And also keep the heat in the mushroom so that we can continue working it without worry of it uh, fracturing. A lot of the heat that goes around the gecko is being shared with the mushroom. Alright, so there's the body. I'm going to let it cool down just a little bit so it doesn't bend or distort when I apply the legs. <clears throat> So let's see, I'm looking for a color of the leg and unfortunately I didn't pull it down to the right diameter ahead of time. So improvise, I'm going to grab a large piece of the same color, uh, it's about 8 millimeter, and I'd really like it to only be about 3 or 4 millimeter. So I'm going to heat up the end of it and then gently touch it to a part of my gecko and pull it out and draw it down to about old three to six millimeter and I'll use that to make the, the legs. See that's too thick to make legs and touch it to it and pull it down very gently. Now, and there it popped off but that's just fine. We've got enough smaller material to make the legs that we need. There's the front right shoulder and then the front left shoulder Again, look for patterns in your work. Always do this repetitive steps. Front left shoulder, front right shoulder, uh, back leg left, back leg right, and then all the appendages beyond that. But keep a pattern. Uh, you don't want to find out that you forgot three toes when you got done with something. Okay using that little dental tool to reinforce a knee joint where I really want it to look like the leg folds back on itself and not be like spaghetti and rounded. So sometimes that dental tool can really help uh, delineate where the knee joint is and where the elbows are. And uh, to match the rest of the body, uh, little white spots with black dots on top so that everything looks equal.
and again with a little dental tool to make the little lines that kind of sharpen up uh, the elbows, the hips, the knee joints, things like that without creating an acute angle. So there's the gecko, the uh, upper sections of the legs and the lower sections, and now we need toes. So I'm using a very small stringer of amber over white, uh, which has nice contrast, looks kind of organic, uh, to create the toes. And do not do three toes. There are no three-toed geckos and lizards or frogs. Uh, do four toes, if not four and or five. Uh, four toes is quite common in the reptile and amphibian world. You can get away with that. It looks good. Uh, get the lengths right between the toes uh, and then try and keep your ratios. If you need a little model, have a picture, look at something on the internet or even buy a little plastic frog or gecko or whatever it is you're working on from a toy store and have it there on your torch stand when you're working. It'll help as a model. So there we go. We got the gecko on there. Curly tail, legs, toes, eyes, head, uh, little chin. He's got a little nostril. Yep, he's a cute fella. Little vertical pupils. And we've got a nice little mushroom in the center that looks very organic. So we'll stick that back in the kiln. And the next step is weld it up to a base. And we'll have a full goblet. Thank you. Like and subscribe.